Hello friends, this is Carmen. Welcome back to my channel. And today I've got something a little bit special for you. I recently ran a poll on my channel, my community tab, asking if you guys would like to see some uh, videos about my daughter Kristen's wedding. And 75% of you says, yes, absolutely. We would love to see those videos. So today I have my daughter Kristen here with me. Hi. And she is going to talk a little bit about her wedding and then we're going to share with you our top 10 ways that we are saving money on her budget friendly wedding. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so Kristen. Yes, hello. <laughs> I'm sure uh, many of my subscribers have heard of you as I talk about you, and I think you were also a model for when I did some of the hair pieces okay. for the succulents and things like that. You're my guinea pig. Yes, I was. And, um, but now you are a bride. Yes, I am. Yes. I'm engaged. Yes. And my baby's all growing up. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, your fiance and what your wedding is all about. Okay. Well, uh, my fiance's name is Lucas. We met, actually, we haven't been together all that long, <laughs> really. Um, actually, this month, in a few days, it's going to be our one-year anniversary, and we got engaged in March. Um, but, yeah, we met on Tinder, of mm -hmm. all places. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it was one of those things where when you know, you know, and we just didn't want to waste any time. And I'm young. I'm only 21. He's also 21, so, I mean, but, but we she just does, can't wait to spend our lives together. She does have her father's and mine's approval. Yes. Uh, Lucas is a wonderful young man. I couldn't have picked a better young man for her. He's a godly young man, and um, he has all the same likes as her, and um, they get along really well, so I'm really happy about that. So tell us a little bit about your vision of your wedding. Okay, so the vision that I've kind of come up with for um, my wedding day. First of all, the date is February 22nd of 2020. So we've got about seven, eight months until then. Um, the theme that I kind of came up with in my head, I'm calling it vintage glam. So basically, it's going to be a lot of vintage pieces, a lot of lace and stuff, but little tiny pieces of sparkle here and there. So like for the sweetheart table, we're gonna do a sequin tablecloth, maybe for the cake table too. Mm -hmm. Just little pops of sparkle here and there because I am a bit of a princess at heart mm. and I need to have that somewhere. But also I get my vintage side from you. You raised me that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have plenty of old books and candlesticks and stuff around the house that we'll be using and we'll get into that also later in the video. But yeah, that's kind of the theme that we're going for. Our colors are burgundy and gold, like my ring, mm -hmm. um, with accents of ivory and kind of a sage green in the greenery here and there. Yeah, yeah. And so we, um, after we started, you know, stop the celebrating, oh, she's engaged, we started thinking, okay, how are we gonna pay for this? <laughs> um, so we knew we were gonna be on a tight budget and although she, um, she is our only daughter, um, you know, and we are following that tradition where uh, we're paying for the most of it, or her dad is. <laughs> but we and uh, Lucas and her are paying uh, a good portion of it too. So we have come up with 10 ways so far that we are saving money on this uh, wedding. So let's get right to it. Number one, your guest list. Keep it small. The uh, guest list that uh, we started with was 75 people. That's the closest uh, immediate family members, closest friends, things like that. Um, and we're definitely going to keep it as close to that as possible. Maybe we may get to 85, but maybe. maybe. Um, but we're going to keep it small. Um, and that, in turn, keeps your bridal party small mm -hmm. too. So how many are you having in your bridal party? I'm only having three bridesmaids and three groomsmen. Yeah. I, I think you said the rule kind of, yeah. there's like a rule where for each hundred people, you should have about three in your bridal party, which is great for me because it ends up being less drama and yeah. you know, those are the people that are closest to me. So um, yeah, but as far as the guest list, I mean, we started out originally in my head, I was thinking maybe a hundred would be fine, 
And then I started putting the guest list together and I'm like, I don't really know that many people. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of friends. <laughs> so, um, well, people that I would invite yeah. to my wedding, you know, so we brought it down to 75 and that's just, you know, my immediate family takes up most of the guest yeah. list. It's about 40 people right there. Mm -hmm. um, and my friends that are still <clears throat> with me since high school and everything. Um, and then Lucas's family isn't that large, so thankfully we're able to keep it fairly small. But it's also a decent sized yeah. wedding in my mind, where it's enough that we're gonna be able to have the celebration yeah. that we want. Yeah, excellent. So number two, flowers. And you know I'm gonna be all over this. <laughs> I um, have been tasked not only with being the wedding planner, but also with the flowers. And I thought long and hard about this, of um, how I was going to go about this. And I actually were approaching it with artificial flowers for the decor of the ceremony and the uh, reception. And then real flowers for the bouquets, the boutonnieres, the corsages. Um, because although I we do want to DIY as much as we can, but we don't want to overwhelm ourselves with so many DIY projects, and particularly flowers, you have to do very close up to the point of the wedding, the day before, if not the day of. So we are doing a combination of, and we have looked around online quite a bit for um, a wholesale type of um, online um, websites for flowers. We looked at Costco, so we may do some from Costco, but we actually found a local grocery store, uh, Trader Joe's, which is in Arizona and in California, maybe New Mexico. It's kind of a West Coast thing. Yeah. Trader Joe's, they have actually a really nice uh, flower section and very, very affordable. Yeah. And they sell a lot of flowers um, in larger quantities as opposed to the smaller bouquets that you may find in the grocery store. So um, that's the route that we're going to go. And that in itself will probably save us close to $1,000, oh, yeah. if not Easy. more, um, doing that. The other thing we're doing with the flowers is we're going to repurpose. So for instance, the ceremony decor um, of the flowers and all that is being moved to this uh, reception so we can get double use out of it. No need in make creating this wonderful display to be seen only for about 20 yeah. minutes or so <laughs> in the ceremony I and that's you. it. So we're going to have somebody move it to the uh, reception area and repurpose it that way. Um, and as much as I tried, I'm not getting any hydrangeas or calla lilies in the flowers because somebody doesn't like them. Well, okay, the flowers that I have pretty much had my heart set on is roses, mostly. I love roses, and especially with the colors that we have, the burgundy, I know that there are some deep burgundy roses out there. I think the specific name of the species of rose is called Black Magic yeah. Rose. And I, oh, I love it. I love it so much. And that's really the main flower that we're going to be using with some ivory roses in there and lots of greenery um, and maybe some baby's breath in there. But I don't know. I felt like, I feel like <laughs> hydrangeas are just a little bit too big, a little maybe. bit too bulky, almost a little too tight. Well, they're days. a little bit overused. I will give you yeah. that. And calla lilies they're were my great, flower. They're a great filler <laughs> flower. Yeah. yeah. So with calla lilies, I feel like they're really a bold statement flower. So if you're going to do calla lilies, I feel like you just need to do calla lilies. Like one of those nice yeah. draping bouquets, which they are beautiful, but I feel like it would kind of clash with roses and everything else that I want. So yeah. that's what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> and burgundy is not an easy color to source in flowers. I'll mm -hmm. tell you that right now. But I have found some very cost-effective flowers, beautiful flowers. Dahlias um, are dahlias. beautiful. Um, so we're going to be using lots of dahlias, too, uh, to bring that burgundy color in. So maybe, keep that in mind when you're picking colors. Maybe some carnations in some there. Carnations. Very overlooked yeah. flower, the carnation. Oh, they're great. They're really pretty they're so and they come in every color. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there you have it about yeah. the flowers. And we will be doing uh, more videos on just the flowers alone too, so stay tuned for that. So number three, the dress. The dress. So 
this is probably the, <laughs> the one portion of the wedding planning that we loved doing, perhaps a little too much, but that's going to be in another video. Um, what we will tell you so far of how we've saved on the dress is a shop off the rack, shop your sample sales, um, shop even um, online websites uh, like there Coco are, Melody, yeah. uh, places like that. Um, but definitely shop the sales. Never pay, you know, um, retail costs for a dress because they can cost you anywhere from fifteen hundred dollars on oh, up. Easy, yeah. easy. And we saved a ton of money. And now I say a ton. I say a ton. A ton. ton. <laughs> okay, uh, on the dress that she bought on sale, and that's going to be coming in. A, in maybe our next video, we'll do about the dress. But uh, keep your budget in, in mind um, when you're going dress shopping because it's so easy to get sucked into that vortex of, oh my God, she looks beautiful. And, you yeah. know, oh, and, I love and, it. What's the price? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, um, you know, keep that in, in mind when you're um, talking about the dress or looking for the dress. Um, so with me, the experience that I have had, obviously, as you can tell, I'm a very small person. I have, I always have been, yeah. all my life, I've been skinny mini, and that's not exactly as great as you may think it is, because it has been very hard for me to find things that fit, um, and it's just almost impossible for me to gain a good amount of weight, so when I go and try on these dresses, I'm like a size two, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and you know, most of the sample dresses that they have are like a size six or eight, which is, you know, an average size, and up. And so I'm like swimming in these dresses so they look a little weird on me or anything, but the thing that we really had to keep in mind and that you should keep in mind too is alterations. Yes. That is the big chunk that is going towards my dress as of right now because it yeah. was off the rack and it is like four sizes too big. <laughs> so so it's gonna be a lot of alterations but nothing that's like not manageable. Um, so definitely alterations, depending on exactly what you need, can go anywhere from like a hundred to five hundred, you know, five six hundred dollars, depending on how much you need, mm -hmm. where you go. So obviously, you know, look online, check out your reviews and everything, all the different tailors and seamstresses that are in your area, and just really know what you're getting into with alterations yeah. because you don't want to end up with a botched dress or anything right. like that. You know, make sure that it's also somebody that you really trust That's reputable. with your dress mm -hmm. and any of the other clothes that you're getting like suits or bridesmaids dresses or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, definitely alterations can add when you budget say a thousand dollars for your dress and you buy a thousand dollar dress. Well, now mm -hmm. you've got three hundred dollars for alterations. Already you've gone over budget then, so keep that in mind. Okay, so number four, the cake. Let them eat cake. <laughs> so with the cake, um, with some of the open houses that we went to, we fell in love with this one particular bakery, um, and she was pretty much set on using that uh, particular bakery, and they were even a preferred vendor of the uh, venue that they're having the wedding at. So we thought, okay, wonderful. But as we started looking more and more into it, um, they charge five fifty a slice uh, for the cake, plus a fifty dollar delivery and setup fee. Mm. So even okay, <laughs> let's say no, not everybody at our at the uh, receptions of seventy five people is going to eat cake. Let's say fifty people. I yeah. mean, you're already That's up still, there a couple hundred bucks, yeah. plus the fifty dollars. So. That may not sound like a huge amount, but when you're trying to save in all the areas and every little bit adds up, it can add up. Mm -hmm. So we actually, I I was the one that actually floated the idea to her. Hey, what about a grocery store bakery cake? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, and so obviously the first thing that popped up in my mind was like one of those big sheet cakes that you get that are in the freezer off to the left of the display. Yeah. You know, and I was like... <laughs> no. But, yeah, no. but once you kind of told me a little bit more about it, and I was like, okay, okay. why not? You know, because there are, I mean, once we looked into it a yeah. little bit more online, all the grocery stores that are around here, we have seen quite a lot of good reviews. Yes. And, you know, they're the 
actual bakeries that are in the grocery store, like here we have Safeway, which is kind of like a Vons if you're in California, um, or like a Whole Foods or Albertsons or whatever, they can do smaller cakes and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. you just have to custom order it. So, um, yeah, so I was a little bit off standish at first, but I've, I've come around to the idea. Yeah, so we did go to Whole Foods, which is a uh, organic type of market, kind of like a Trader Joe's, and they have a wonderful bakery there, and they had some fantastic round cakes. They make them very tall, like a regular wedding cake. Um, and they have all sorts of different flavors that you can choose from. And the great thing about that particular store is that they don't use any artificial flavors or fillers or anything like that. And for a two-tier cake, um, well, it would two-tier. Two-tier. I mean, they don't tier them themselves. We would have to tier it. Yeah. Or, you know, two display sizes. them separately. Two different sizes. Um, it would cost us $70. Plus, for the whole thing. that's for the whole thing, including tax. So we're like, whoa. All right. And it was a beautiful cake. All yeah. you have to do is add some flowers to it, and no one will be the wiser. Mm -hmm. Well, unless people that watch this video. But, uh, <laughs> but it, you know, it would look just as wonderful as if we had gone with the regular bakery. Mm -hmm. So that's one great way to save. Is don't knock the grocery store bakeries. Mm -hmm. Okay. So number five, our selfie station. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to do a photo booth because you know photo booths are so much fun and we've seen them at weddings that we've gone to and but as we started looking into them uh, photo booths are They're really expensive. expensive depending on exactly what you want yeah mm -hmm. um you know the cheapest one <laughs> or least expensive one that we found was Five hundred dollars, and that was only for a two-hour period. We didn't even have it all night. Uh, you know, four hours yeah. of the reception. It was only two hours. So, um, five hundred dollars. I wasn't having that. So, I started thinking about it and looking on Pinterest, and I came across this article of using um, or creating your own selfie station. Now, what does everybody have nowadays, and where do they take this thing with them everywhere? A phone, a, phone. a smartphone, and everybody's taking selfies oh, yeah. and everybody's, yeah. you know, taking pictures of everybody else. Um, so we decided to set up our own uh, selfie station. We would uh, purchase through Amazon, and I'll show a picture of it here, um, a backdrop with the um, poles and everything that you would need to hold the backdrop. And that's actually something that I'll be using in the future. Um, so it's not going to go to waste. <laughs> and um, some put some selfie sticks out there, some props, things like that, and voila, instant selfie station. And you know, we they are creating their own hashtags so that people will be able to send them out on social media and um, um, with their hashtag, and that's really all you need. Will people miss the little strip? Mm. Probably not. Okay, okay, let's face it. Probably they usually, not. They they end up in the trash. And they end up in the trash. <laughs> Ours are on our fridge. Yeah. But you know we're not like most people, so yeah. most of them may not even save it. Yeah. But what they will save and share are the pictures on their phone. So we're going with a selfie okay. station. Yeah, and we also you graciously she designed us um, our own Snapchat filter because yeah. I, we are going to have a lot of friends and people our age that. Use Snapchat, so there's mm -hmm. going to be a Snapchat filter with the hash with the hashtag. Yeah, and you know, I know that people are still going to yeah. be loving it. It's it's going to be great. Yeah, I know definitely. <laughs> okay, number six, invitations. Now, um, invitations, you know, can run the gamut from very inexpensive if you want to do uh, e invites, which I didn't want to go that route. <laughs> Um, to, you know, a whole suite of uh, invitations with RSVP cards and everything that can run five, five dollars an invitation. I mean, that's ridiculous. So, um, what we did was, um, you guys probably know I have my Etsy shop and I design a lot of um, artwork and watercolors and stuff. So, I designed for them their own um, kind of... Uh, invitation basically mm -hmm. their own suite of invitation and it, with their colors and with the watercolor um uh, watercolor flowers and 
I am using Vistaprint. I've used Vistaprint in the past for many, many things and um, get lots of discounts with them. So for 40 invitations, let's say for 75 people, you know, we're going to spend about $40. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really, really inexpensive and we've already ordered some um, samples and I'll show you some pictures of that sample here that it came back very, very nice. We can choose the type of paper that we want, the type of envelope we want, if we want address on the envelope. I mean, you can add yeah. things to it to make it a little bit more personalized. But in the end, again, that's something else that's going to go in the recycling can. Because once people get the de details of where it's at and what time, mm -hmm. most people won't keep it past that date. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing that we did to save money on that was the RSVP cards. Mm -hmm. And what are we using for that? We are actually using a website for our RSVP and a registry and all sorts of other things. So we use Zola.com. It's not a sponsored, great, but not Zola, sponsored. call me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're using Zola. So that's where it's so helpful. Yeah. It really is. Um, so that's where we have our RSVP set up. We're creating our own website through there. So when people get the invitation, it is going to have a link to the website where they can go and RSVP. And also we're going to have our registry on there where they can go ahead mm -hmm. and pick whatever they want to get us on our registry. And also that's where we have our guest list mm -hmm. and all of our addresses. It's so time. helpful. It is so it's helpful. It's great. It's not like 1990 when I got married and you had to keep track of all these RSVPs and everything. Yeah. It's so helpful. Um, keeping on the paper theme, um, the other things we are not doing are programs for the ceremony and menus for the dinner. We are doing menus, but not at each station. We are doing one, again, designed by me and printed through Vistaprint, one menu per table that will be framed and people can look at that to see what is on the menu. Mm -hmm. Programs for the ceremony. Nobody, Nobody keeps that. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So um, those are ways that you can save hundreds and hundreds of dollars on your paper goods, invitations, and RSVPs and all that. So so adding on to that kind of a little bit. So for the we are kind of having a sort of program sign. Yeah. We are going to be using a couple of signs in our ceremony decor. So for um, kind of sitting in the cocktail hour area, we're going to be using a nice, long, tall mirror. And on it is going to say, welcome to Kristen and Lucas's wedding. And then we're going to have an order of events. So ceremony at four o'clock, mm -hmm. cocktail hour, all that. Mm -hmm. So that way people can still know when things are happening. It's just not on like a hundred right. sheets of paper. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's and just going to go to waste. It's just more affordable, uh, cost effective, and better for the environment, you know, really yeah. just to have one big thing yeah. as opposed to a bunch of paper yeah. that's thrown away. So. Yeah, and then we are also doing an unplugged ceremony. So we're going to mm -hmm. have a little sign yeah. at the entryway of the aisle that says, you know, please enjoy the moment with us. Please put away your cameras and cell phones until after the ceremony is over because we paid for the photographer and I don't want you ruining our pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's standing in the aisle so, taking a yeah, picture. So a lot of, you know, little signs and mm -hmm. stuff that, you know, if people want to remember it, they can take a picture of it or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of ties exactly. into that. And as we get these signs printed out or either created, um, we'll definitely be doing some hauls for you um, to show yeah. you what that is. Yeah. Number seven, favors. Do yourself a favor and it's nay the favors, okay? I um, really thought about that one, didn't, didn't you? <laughs> no, actually, that just came to me. <laughs> um, when was the last time you actually remember what favors you took? I, I don't. I don't. You know, I don't. To the right. weddings that we have been to, I don't remember the favors. <laughs> yeah, um, because most of them are left behind one or um, people don't really use them. Um, exactly. it's, it's hard to come up with something that is affordable and something that can be used for people. So people will not notice if you do not have favors there, trust me. Um, and that's just something you know that you can save on easily and helps you in time to the day before the week before stuffing all those little bags or boxes candy or, candy or, or whatever it may oh. be putting them all out it just saves a yeah. lot of headache and um, some money too so okay 
Number eight. <laughs> Look at my finger. Eight. Your decor. Use what you already have. And Chris, Kristen um, touched upon this at the beginning. Um, I have a lot of vintage things. I have a lot of collections and old things. <laughs> and um, since her part of her theme is vintage, we are going to be using a lot of the things I already have here. Um, my books, some vases, some um, candle holders for the cards, to collect the cards at the entrance. We're using an old vintage suitcase that I have, um, you know, some doilies and things like that to give it that vintage vibe. And it's all things I already have. I'm not gonna have to spend any money on that. And if we do have to get a few things, like maybe some lanterns and things like that, those are things that she will be able to use in her decor in her new home. Mm -hmm. So that's a bonus tip to that mm -hmm. one. Buy things that you can use in your home decor after the wedding, that it's not just a one-time use. Yeah. Um, some things you can't get away from it, but for the most part, try to get things that you can use um, and repurpose after the wedding. Okay. Um, number nine, rain. And you can talk about mm -hmm. this a little mm -hmm. bit. How did you guys get your rings? All right, so my ring, I'll probably insert a picture in here somewhere, but if you want to close up, it's right here. Um, <laughs> so my ring, I actually um, did a little bit of research beforehand, and <laughs> they'll help. You know, yeah, I just kind of gave them a little nudge, and I picked out my ring, and I told them this is the one that I want. If I'm going to be wearing it on my finger for the rest of my life, this is what I want. So um, I found my ring off of Etsy. Um, the shop and everything is going to be linked in the description. Um, so I think my ring was about $500. And it is a 14 karat rose gold with a garnet inset. I'm not a huge fan of diamonds. That's just my personal taste. Lucky Lucas. I feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing, save your money, don't, just don't get diamonds. Yeah. Gemstones are great. Um, but you know, I, I, I really liked the way that this looked and it's unique, I've never seen a ring like this before. And I just thought it was beautiful. It is a beautiful and ring. And so we're also gonna be doing something similar with our wedding bands. So we're gonna be getting our wedding bands also off of Etsy. We don't know exactly which ones we're getting yet, um, but we'll probably update that further along. Um, but our wedding bands each are probably going to cost maybe like $150, yeah. $200 at the most mm -hmm. because he's pretty simple, I'm pretty simple, you know, with my wedding band. I don't want anything that's going to be huge to take away from my actual engagement ring. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. There are so many small businesses out there yeah. that do such great work. I love my ring. It looks like I paid like $2,000 yeah. for it yeah. at a jewelry store. But I didn't, and that's what's so great about it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. You don't have to go to a grocery store, a grocery store, a jewelry <laughs> store, <laughs> that's a to get store. <laughs> to, to get you know a ring or jewelry yeah. that you really love. There are so many places out there online. Obviously, do your research and read the reviews and everything. Um, but you know, consider reaching out to those smaller businesses and also kind of giving back to the community. Yeah, Etsy's a great place for that. You yeah. can find some beautiful rings on there with small businesses, jewelry makers that create some beautiful one-of-a-kind pieces mm -hmm. as opposed to the mall jewelry store that has all the same pieces. So, yeah. you know, if you're looking for uniqueness along with the cost savings, that's something to, to keep in mind. Okay. So finally, number 10, hair and makeup. What are you doing for your hair and makeup? All right, so for hair and makeup, as much as I would love to be pampered on my wedding day, we don't got the money for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got uh, the money for that. <laughs> and that is one thing that I'm comfortable with uh, compromising on. Um, as you can see, I can do my own makeup. I've been doing my own makeup for years. In high school, I was in choir and musicals, so I have experience with doing, you know, Theater. photography and stage makeup mm -hmm. and long-lasting makeup. I remember when we were doing dress rehearsals for musicals, we were at rehearsal for hours on end, sweating our butts off, dancing and singing at the same time, and my makeup would not budge, yeah. and it was amazing. So that's one thing that I'm comfortable with doing myself. Um, my hair, not so much, but that's where some friends or family can come in to help. 
Um, I graciously have two people that I can think of that would be able to do my hair. My stepsister has done my hair before, she's awesome. And also my maid of honor slash best friend's sister, who I'm also really good friends with, can also, she's also a studying cosmetologist. cosmetologist. So she can do my hair or makeup if I wanted her to. Yeah. So that's just one thing to keep in mind because hair and makeup services can get so expensive Very. depending on exactly what you want. If you want an updo or a blowout, if you want your makeup done with an airbrush or whatever, yeah. and how many people you want to get done, say mm -hmm. mother of the bride or all of your bridesmaids, it adds up yeah, absolutely very, very quickly. You know, um, so like for me, my mom and all three of my bridesmaids, that's like five people right there. That'd be about over five hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars right there, yeah. give or take. Mm -hmm. So um, whereas you know, I'm obviously gonna be paying my friends or family, whoever I decide to have do my hair, um, but it's not going to be anywhere near that. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving my bridesmaids also the option, if they want to have them also do their hair or makeup, they can. Or, you know, I think all of my bridesmaids are pretty makeup yeah. savvy as well. Um, one of my bridesmaids, my future sister-in-law, I guess you could say, she's my brother's girlfriend, she's also very, very good at makeup, and she's offered yeah. to do my makeup for my engagement shoot and all that, so I might have her do my makeup, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. So yeah, that's just one thing to keep in mind. If you have somebody in mind that you wouldn't mind asking, or maybe they could do it as a wedding gift to you, mm -hmm. that would be great. It would save you so much time and mm -hmm. money. It's worth yeah, it. definitely. Yeah. And then it's a way of including them yeah. uh, in the the day. You know, perhaps they weren't in the wedding party itself, but they can be included uh, within the day that way. So great way to save some money. So there you have it, friends, 10 ways that so far that we've come up with that we are saving money and we're always on the lookout for more. Um, I hope you enjoyed to the first video of this little series that we're doing. Um, we may not put out videos on this every week. I'm still going to do my plant videos. Don't worry about that. But we may put one out every two weeks or monthly or something like that um, and keep you you know, on this journey up into uh, her and Lucas's uh, wedding day. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it so very much. And if it's your first time here, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any of these videos and also any of my um, plant videos too, okay? So thanks so much, friends. Have a blessed day. Bye.